All right, guys, we are back again with another video, and in this video, we're going to be talking about infinite baffle. Now, let's kind of talk about what infinite baffle is before we go into whether or not your subwoofer will work well with an infinite baffle setup. An infinite baffle is when you literally put a subwoofer on a baffle, and that baffle then acts as the sealed container. Now typically what, how this works is that people will have like a falls wall and that falls wall will be all subwoofers and between, behind that falls wall will be a space. Now that space can be pretty much any size. Now it just means large sealed cabinet basically. Um, now some people will do this in Colorado. You'll see it in the trunk. So they'll use the trunk as their sealed box. Uh, and you can see it plenty of other ways too. Typically, you'll see people maybe let it out in another room. So the back of the subwoofer would then be actually going into another room. So the question is, how do you figure out which subwoofers will work well for an infinite baffle setup? Now, we're going to look at a couple different ones. We're going to look at this Titan 10 inch and this Dayton Audio RSS 210 HO. Now, there's a couple things that you're going to want to look for. The first thing you want to do is scroll down, and uh, you'll notice this Dayton HO is a really, really nice subwoofer. Um, anyone that, that doesn't know about these, they're great subwoofers. Um, now, if you scroll down, what you're going to want to do is go to your Thiel Small Parameters. Now, when you go to these, you're going to look for a number called QTS. Now, this QTS will have a number associated with it, and this number can really vary. Um, typically what you're going to want to look for is anything over 0.7. Anything over 0.7 has a chance to work in an infinite baffle setup. Now something like a 0.4 probably is not going to work well in an infinite baffle. And we're going to show you that. We're going to model it in WinISD to show you that. Um, but before we do that, let's take a look at this Titan. This Titan is a very inexpensive subwoofer. It's only $10.78. And we're going to scroll down to the Q, and we're going to look at it, and it's going to say that it has a QTS of 1.22. Now, that's way over 0.7, so it probably works well. We also have something else going for us here, and that's if you read this, it actually says the high QTS makes this driver suitable for large, sealed, and free air designs. So we already know that this is probably going to work well. But how do we model it in WinISD to make sure that it's going to work well? Well, let's open it up in WinISD. Once again, we said it's basically a large sealed enclosure. So let's pull up that Titan that we already know works well in it and kind of show you how to do that. Now, the first thing you want to do is select a closed box and just select whatever alignment you want in this case. And we're going to go ahead and just label this Titan. When we select Titan, uh, you're going to notice that the first thing you're going to notice is when we go on box, look, it's already selected a huge box. Now, that should be something that shoots out to you saying, oh wow, this might be a good infinite baffle setup. Uh, now, here's what we can do. We can manipulate these numbers. So like, for example, if you're using a whole nother room behind you, let's say you're using a 20 by 10 room. Well, that's 1,000 cubic, I'm sorry, that's 200 cubic feet. So if we click on 200 cubic feet, look what that graph did. That graph didn't do anything. So there's five cubic feet, there's 200. It barely moves at all. That's one thing that we can say, okay, this would be a good infinite baffle setup. Now that's basically using an entire room. All right, now let's take a look at that Dayton HO. Now we're going to do the same thing with the Dayton, and we're going to see a, it react a little bit different. Um, and before, while we're pulling that up, um, I do want to actually show you one thing. If you notice, this automatically went to vented. Well, that's because a 0.4 typically is a vented design. It typically does not work as well in a closed design. So we're going to go ahead and pick closed and we are going to go uh, call it Dayton uh, sealed. All right. Oop. Sealed. And while we're going sealed, we're going to see, I'm going to change this color too so that we don't get confused. All right. So it's the green line. Before we do anything, let's look at that Titan real quick. That Titan has an F3 in a once again, 200 cubic foot room of 30 hertz. That's unreal. Um, now that's basically a 200 cubic foot box. That's that's huge. First thing you're going to notice with this uh, Dayton HO sealed is it just, I mean, it's at 53 hertz. Nah, I mean, that's more of a mid-bass than a subwoofer at that point in time. I mean, 
some people may disagree and say, you know, you might have uh, some room gain there, and that's true, you could, but but typically that's not good. Now, the other thing we can do is remember when we looked at the Titan, it had a five cubic. Look at what this is, 0.347. That is very low. So we already know that when we manipulate this higher, it's probably not going to react very well. But let's just see what it does. Um, let's just go skip right to the 200 cubic feet. Now look how much that dropped. I mean, that's just unreal how much that has already dropped. It just means, guys, it's just not really designed for infinite baffle. That's okay. That's that's how we learn. Now, we can go through all the subwoofers on Parts Express website and see which ones work with infinite baffle, which ones don't. Typically look for a high Q. Now, before we go, let's go ahead and see what that Dayton does non-infinite baffle so that we can see the difference. So we're going to pick the exact same driver. This time we're going to go vented, and we're going to kick uh, select Chevy Chev, which should be a fairly flat response, and we're going to just label this one Dayton. Now, this is the vented version or ported version, however you want to call it. Wow, and look at the difference. I mean, that has an F3 of 27 hertz. Uh, once again, we'll change the color just so we're not all confused. This is a red one. 27 hertz, I mean, it actually does better than Titan in the Infinite Baffle. That's a much better design for that particular subwoofer. So, guys, the point is when we're selecting infinite baffle, if we want to do that, which is a great thing to do for, for some people, you're going to want to look at something like this in WinISD and mess with these things. You're also going to want to check the cue of the speaker. Once you do those two things, you should have a pretty good idea of whether or not it's going to work with infinite baffle. All right, guys, I know there's a lot of confusion around this subject, so I hope that this clarified some things. Please, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And as always, remember to subscribe. Thanks, guys.